Rev up your engines! Today I'm going to talk about ways that mechanics can rip you off and how you can avoid it in the first place. Now I have to admit over the years dishonest mechanics have actually made me a lot of money because people went to the dishonest mechanics and they said they needed three four thousand dollars worth of work then they'd come to me for a second opinion and I'd say hey they made up most of that stuff maybe you need to do this two or three hundred dollar job but the rest of it you don't need. I would have never gotten those customers if the first mechanics had been honest. Now the first thing is being overcharged for a job. I'll give you a perfect example of one I had last week. A customer had an Acura and it was recalled to have the engine rebuilt. So he took it to the dealer and they said yes they have to rebuild the engine. But they have to replace the timing belt. Now according to them the timing belt wasn't included in the recall so they wanted $785 to change that while they were rebuilding the engine which if you know anything about cars is a total ripoff because to rebuild the engine they got to take it all apart so the timing belt has to be taken off along with a bunch of other things they were going to charge them $785 because that's the book that says here's what it costs to replace a timing belt but that's on an engine that's all put together they had to take the whole thing apart anyway. So they had to remove the timing belt to do all that work. So what they should have done was said, well, the timing belt is $89. We'll charge you for the belt. They shouldn't charge labor because they had to take the thing off anyway. And I see this all the time. So it always behooves you to learn a little bit about your car so you don't get ripped off like that. You can do a little research or you can ask a guy like me. They often will try to do stuff like that. Then I'll show them the book. See, it says replace timing belt at $785. I see this kind of double charging happening all the time. If you're going in for a recall, have the recall done and nothing else. Because they don't make any money on recalls at the dealership. So they're always trying to pile stuff on top so they make money. You got a recall? Let them do the recall and say, do the recall and nothing else. Now, the next thing to avoid is people selling you things that you just don't need. Many years ago, when GM had their horrible V8 diesel engine that was a converted gasoline 350 V8 engine, I had a friend and he showed me a bill from the dealer. He was mad because even after he spent a bunch of money, the dealer didn't run right. Actually, it was the engine going out because one of those crappy diesel conversions and they never were any good anyways. But I looked at the bill from the dealer and included in it was eight spark plugs. And of course, diesels don't have spark plugs. They just made the whole thing up. And when they got caught, all they said to the guy, oh, oh, we made a mistake in billing and they refunded his money for the spark plugs. Now that was an extreme example, but I see it all the time. Things are perfectly good. People try to sell them parts that they don't need. One of my customers, she was a bookkeeper and she was a bookkeeper for lots of people. And one of the guys was a millionaire and he had a Volvo and she knew he was getting ripped off. So she had him bring it to me. So I looked at his service records. Now this Volvo was like three years old, but it only had 15,000 miles on it because the guy flew everywhere. He didn't drive his car all that much. He lived downtown, so he didn't have to travel around a lot. Well, in those 15,000 miles, they had sold him three sets of tires and three sets of brake pads. They just made up stuff. And the guy was a millionaire. He just thought, oh, it's a Swedish car. It cost money to maintain them. I want it to run good. So he paid for three sets of tires and three sets of brake pads. And he probably didn't need any of them at all with only 15,000 miles on the car. I see flat out dishonesty like that all the time, especially when it comes to these service intervals. That's something you really got to watch out for. I had a customer with a Porsche. Now it was four years old, but it only had 8,000 miles on it. She only used it as a weekend toy, right? So she takes it into the dealer for the servicing. And basically they charge her a thousand dollars just to change the oil and to check things. And then they advised that she had $5,000 more work done on the car. And since it was the first time I worked on a car, a friend told her about me. I said, bring it over and let me check it out. So I pulled off all the wheels. I looked at everything that they said the car needed and it didn't need any of that stuff. The brake pads weren't worn out. Nothing was leaking. Everything was working fine. So I said, let me call up the Porsche dealer and I'll chew him out for being crooks and trying to sell you all the stuff your car doesn't need. And here's how the guy responded at the Porsche dealer. He said, well, when the cars are four years old, we advise replacing the brake master cylinder, the rotors, the brake pads, the brake calipers, 
everything because this is a performance car and we want our customers to be safe. So I said, hey, the car's only got 8,000 miles on it. Did you even look at the car? I pulled the wheels up. I said, this thing still has 90% of everything left on it. There's no reason to change it all. But they used one of those 50,000 miles or four years, whichever comes first, service intervals and tried to sell her a bunch of stuff. That's a load of nonsense. On many modern cars, every so many miles, some of them it's 15,000 miles, some of it's 30, a little light comes on to remind you that it's time to service the car. People get freaked out and think, oh, something's wrong with my car, I gotta take it right in. Well, those things just come on so many miles. And a lot of it is total nonsense. There's nothing wrong with the car at all. It's just, they know, you see this light? A lot of people, oh, they'll take it to the dealer, oh, this light is on. And then they'll say, oh, well, it's time for your, a uh, 30,000 mile checkup and that's going to be $900 and blah blah blah. That's really taking things too far when they started putting all those warning lights because hey, it doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with your car at all, but it scares people. And especially older people, they'll often get talked into buying a whole bunch of stuff that their car doesn't need. Just last week, one of my customers told their friends about me because they went into the Toyota dealer and they were all upset because they said the car needed $3,500 worth of work. They took it in under one of those service intervals. And of course, they tried to sell them everything including the kitchen sink. I went through it with a fine tooth comb, used my fancy scan tool, and really I couldn't find anything wrong with the vehicle. Now, the rear brake pads are getting a little thin. I said, well, you know, they're going to last another five, ten thousand miles probably. I said, I'll go ahead and change the rear brake pads. So I did that, but even that didn't need to be done right away. And they tried to tell you, it's, oh, it's dangerous, you need to do this. Those stupid little lights, they probably sold more unnecessary repairs to people than anything I can think about. So if your car is one of those service interval lights that comes on, hey, do a little research on your own car. See how often that light comes on and you can learn what it really means. Don't be scared that, oh, my car is going to blow up. Most of the time it has absolutely nothing to do with anything other than a certain time frame has passed on and then the light came on. Sometimes think of that light as a game of Monopoly where you get a card that says do not pass, go, do not collect $200, go directly to jail. Only in this case, jail is the dealer that's going to try to fleece you. Yes, you want to maintain your car, oil changes, and everything that needs to be done. You're better off getting a little notebook, do a little research, see what has to be done on your car at what time, and do it then. Don't go buy these imaginary lights that come on every so many miles, regardless of how you maintain or drive your car. Take many Toyotas, for example. They use a Hoke coolant, hybrid organic acid technology. Many of them go seven years or 150,000 miles. So all you got to do is, when it's new, put it in your glove box, a little notebook, and say, coolant, seven years, 150,000 miles. Then you know, when that time comes up, you go ahead and change it. Do that for all your service intervals. Don't trust some stupid little light that comes on and then people try to sell you stuff. That's why the most important thing is to find an honest mechanic. It doesn't matter how good a mechanic is. If he's not honest, everything's thrown out the window. Now, I know some really good mechanics that charge a whole bunch of money, but they're honest. You can afford what they're charging. You're going to get a good job done. And I have friends that live in other places of the country. They say, Oh wow, Bob, you know, he was a really good mechanic, but every time we went to him, $100 for this, $100 for that, this was years ago, and today when I talk to these people, they say, it's $1,000 for this, $1,000 for that. Realize, yes, things cost more, which makes the importance of an honest mechanic even bigger. I've seen dishonest mechanics, they have a little spray bottle. They'll spray the top of the strut under here. Then they'll show the customer, look, your strut's leaking. You need new struts. I've seen them try to sell all kinds of stuff. Oh, you need your fuel injectors cleaned. Most cars, when they're driving normally with good gas, gasoline's a very good cleaner. It'll clean the engines by themselves. Now, if you do have a GDI gasoline direct injection, some of those do carbon up and they actually have to be cleaned. Regular fuel injected cars, you drive them with good gas and maintain them, they really don't need the fuel injectors cleaned or vice versa. Now a lot of the manufacturers say, oh, the automatic transmission fluid is a lifetime fluid. You never have to change it. It's good for the lifetime of the transmission. Well, if you don't change it every once in a while, believe me, it's going to get dirty. The transmission is going to wear out. It'll be long after the warranty is up and you'll have to pay for a super expensive transmission. So in this case, it's actually better to do more maintenance than what the manufacturers often suggest because they want to sell you either another another transmission that costs thousands and thousands or that you give up and buy another car. But I could never understand that philosophy because if the transmission did break on a car that I bought, I would never buy another one of those car manufacturers. That'd be the end of that. And that's where the Japanese have 
eating up the car market. When I was a young mechanic, let me tell you, Japanese cars were few and far between. You hardly ever saw them. Now go out and look at a parking lot. They're almost all Japanese cars because they gradually made them better and they didn't put as much planned obsolescence in them. So people bought them. They weren't particularly enamored with the Japanese. They just said, hey, they make something that doesn't break. I'm going to buy it. And of course, when it comes to not getting ripped off on repairs the best thing is to have a car that very rarely needs repairs because it doesn't matter how good or how honest your mechanic is let's say you go out and buy a fiat odds are the thing is going to break down before it's time regardless of how you take care of it you're going to spend a lot of your hard-earned money on repairs whether people are honest or not you know get a little flashlight you can check your struts before any mechanic looks at it they're all dry and it rides good and then if you go someplace and they say look your struts leaking you just check it you know it wasn't leaking if it's got oil on it you know they're crooks and go ahead and get one of those little scan bluetooth jobs that plugs into your obd port that works off your phone you can say things like well it's got uh po174 so i know it's running a little bit lean the codes will tell you that and if you go a little further you can go into live data on these things and you can say well the fuel trim is you know it's adding eight percent fuel and when you show there's some knowledge they can have a lot harder time pulling the wool over your eyes. So now you know, typical scams that mechanics might try pulling on you and how you can avoid them in the first place. So if you never wanna miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.